brand website, they describe themselves as a planner notebook created by the staff of the, web of the website, Hobo Nikan Itoi Shimbu. Shimbun. I, I'm, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. And that is shortened as Hobonichi. And Techo, they're all Techos because the word Techo, which you can see in some of the planners, um, is a Japanese word for a planner notebook. They also describe their planners as a life book because um, their goal, and, I, and at least in my case, it does work that way, they're more than a planner. They're also to record your life, uh, main events, and memories, and things like that. The brand, also according to the website, is 18 years old. Well, actually 19 this year. Um, I guess in 2021, they will be 20 years old. From what I have seen in reviews, what makes them very popular is their overall minimalistic design and their paper, which is Tomoe River paper. I've been curious if the Tomoe River paper is kind of a blend with rice paper, considering how light it is and how well it takes ink. But I haven't seen anywhere, like what's the composition of the paper which I am curious to know about it. The brand has become increasingly popular over the recent years and apparently there are now almost a million users of the Techo books worldwide, which is, I think it's very impressive. Hobonichi brand is the Hobonichi Techo original. This is the Japanese version, is the one that they've had since the beginning of the brand. And is very straight. What I like the most about this, as I have said in previous videos, is first of all the paper, second, the size is very non-intimidating because this is very easy to fill up and it's also very versatile versatile because even you have one page per day and you can do whatever you want with this um, so the planner is mostly this thick cardboard um, by itself it can be sturdy enough to have it like this my issue with this one as you can see here, um, is that it, it stains very easily. It, pick, it picks up anything and just, yeah. So even though the cardboard can stand the daily use, it ends up looking very ugly. I mean, I had it by itself for about a month and this is how it turned out. So that's when I decided to get a cover for this one. So yes, we have this uh, light beige cardboard. So this is it. Well. It has these three calendars, the current year, the previous year, and the following year. So 2020, 2019, 2021. And then it has these, I'm not sure wh what, how to call this kind of calendar. Um, some people use them, use them for habit tracking. I actually use it to track my sleep, my mood, and my stress during the month. And it's a habit that I've been really liking. Um, some other people use it to mark special dates, track projects, and things like that. So I really like this type of calendar. I, I don't think any other planner has it. The Jibun Techo has some, something similar, but I don't know, I really like this. I don't think I would go back to using a planner that doesn't have this kind of uh, year, uh, yearly view. Then it has the 
monthly calendar, which by the size of the planner, these squares are big enough to be able to write things in them and track things and events. Unlike many other planners, such as the Moleskine in the regular size, let me show you. For example, compare the size. This is much, much smaller than this. And if you go into the monthly view, uh, Moleskine has it usually in one page. So it is never big enough to actually write things. So I usually leave this blank. So those, that's the monthly calendar. Um, the fact that this paper is so, I don't know what the, what's the word, maybe versatile, it takes anything, it gives you a lot of freedom to also use it as, a, as an art journal. Um, and I will show you in my, in this one. So yes, yeah. so this is my 2020 version. This is the monthly calendar. You have till, you have the whole year. It starts in December, 2019. Oops, here, December, 2019, 20, January, 2020. And it goes through uh, December, 2020. And it gives you three extra, extra months for future planning, which I think is great. I rarely use them because by the time we're in November, I already have my new planner. But I think this is a very good thing to have. For example, if I, by now I know I will have an event on January 2021, I could write it now. So there's January, February, and March 2021. It gives you two blank pages, turning the page to a new year, where you can write your goals, anything, maybe put some pictures. And when you get into the dailies, each month has a different color. As you can see, uh, January is kind of this orange, then February is brown, and it goes like that. And you can see all the months in here. There. Another characteristic about this, the lines are so light that you can either use them or ignore them. In my case, I rarely use the times in here. It goes from 6 a.m. through 3 a.m. And you have a line here where you can use this space for scheduling events. You have these squares here where you can put your tasks or your to-do list. And these can be used to write notes. Uh, the way I use it varies every day depending on what I have to do, and my plans and my events. And that is the main reason I love this planner. Because it gives me the freedom to use it however I need to use it each day. As an example, so here, uh, this is the Moleskine, oof, well, Moleskine Pro Weekly Diary. This is a 2018 version. If you want to review on this one, um, I will just make a parenthesis here. This, if this is a design that works for you, I will add that this was actually a, a good planner. It's, it has every week a space for notes, project, status, task, and then you have your week and then it repeats uh, those pages that you can use however you want. And I'm going <laughs> to another topic here, but I, have, I haven't seen this planner with any other user, so let me just make a parenthesis. Mm, the way I use this every week was for here notes, goals, think videos I want to shoot, books I want to read, and things I have I have to my shopping list, and then I had the week, which I decorated. But as you can see here, I didn't really use it because you only have this space to write the things you have to do, 
And I didn't feel as much freedom in, in here as I feel in here, even though this is smaller. You can see the huge difference. Even in my 2019 version, you can see here how I just used it however I needed to use it. Yeah, I had a lot of freedom to experiment and try new things. So that's the main reason I love this brand and this planner and why I think this is the best planner I have ever had. So going back to the description, they all have these quotes in here. This is Japanese, so I have no idea what it says, but the English version does have uh, in quotes in English. You have your month, the day of the month, I, the Japanese sign for something, and the faces of the moon. And this is what day in the year it is. So in January, of course, January 15 is the 15th day of the week. But when you move forward, when you're in June 10th, during the day 162 of the year, which I think this is very useful for if you're tracking um, some goals or projects and you're tracking them through a period, period of time, this is great. For me, it is great because I have goals throughout the year that doesn't necessarily correspond to a month. So you'll ha you also have the moon faces, which I also love because I do like to keep track of the moon faces. <laughs> and that's pretty much it At, in the back. Let me go here. So the planner ends. in December 31st. Ah, sorry, also, uh, here you have the month and it has a little circle that shows you in what and where in the month are you. This is something I've seen mostly in Japanese planners because the Jibun Techo also has it and I, I like it. I mean, I, I like everything about this planner. So um, when you go to the end, uh, there's December 31st you have then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen blank pages to use however however you want. This I think works mostly for students. Um, where you can have kind of like a schedule Monday through Sunday and something here. You have graph paper where you can do trackers. Last year I used all these pages just to continue uh, as more notes, uh, pages for notes. This is for your favorite something. So you put the date and if you went to a movie, if you read a book, you heard a song, went to a restaurant, shopping, or maybe a play, you have five stars that you can mark. I actually did use this and I really like it because I can see some of my favorite movies that I watched in the year and what I thought about them and when I watched them. So there's that. Um, you have four pages of that. This wasn't in the previous planner in 2019. This was in year, the years before 2019. I've seen it in the 2018 version, I think. In here, after the movies and things like that, you have this, I guess, for kind of like a comic book or a list. I can't really, I can't read this. So I don't know what was the purpose of this, but as you can see, I didn't find a use for it. So this is much better. My 100. So my 100. I am tracking, uh, I'm not using it as a 100 list of th something. So these two are for the books I want to attempt to read in this year. This also includes audiobooks. And then you mark off when you have, when I have read them. On this side, I'm writing down words I've learned this year. So I'm using this column for English and this column 
for Spanish. And then, I like this, I, I didn't see this before. Um, I guess these are kind of examples of headers you can use inside the planner. So for something new, for something good, check, book, recipe, memo, cinema. I really like this. And then I have no idea what this says. All these pages, I just write on top of them. I really don't mind. Gifts, I use this for <laughs> my um, passwords and usernames. Um, and this is something about if you were born, for example, let's say in 1988, this year you would be 32 and things like that. The first number, I have no clue what that is because it's clearly not the month. So yeah, I will have to look for a translation for this. Addresses, I also use these for notes, more notes, and that's it. And then you have um, the number of the planner cardboard paper and this is pretty much it. The planner is very flexible. So the things I love about this planner, I've said it, uh, you have a lot of space, but I, my, well, actually enough space to do whatever you want in your day. Uh, the paper, I love the feel of it, the texture, how soft it is, how it takes any kind of uh, medium like ink, um, watercolor, gouache, most markers, not all of them. Sharpies don't go well with any planner paper, I think. Another thing I love about this planner is that it opens flat. So this is the main planner, the Techo in the original size and Japanese. Then they have, just like this, there's the A5 size. So these two are exactly the same. Well, almost. I'll show you the difference. Um, they're mo mostly the same. They're both Japanese. The daily design and layout is identical. It has the quotes, same colors. For both versions, the A6 and the A5 size, you can buy either the whole uh, year in a, a whole year in a book, or the year in two books. And so, so these two are essentially the same. The difference with the the A5 size. Let me go inside. It, there, it also has has this cardboard. Well, here, this cardboard material that also stains very easily. They always come in these two colors, blue and yellow. So you have January through July and July through December. Avec is the version that is two books, uh, one year in two books. So it has this cardboard and this uh, yearly view. Something, so here, something I liked about this is that even though this is half a year, you have the whole year in this kind of calendar. And I guess this is for future planning. So in case you're only carrying one of them, you can always have this space, space to put uh, things that belong to this planner. So as you can see, I didn't use this much. I have a video where I explain why this didn't work for me and it was mainly because of the space. Uh, this space worked better for me, it was just enough. I had a very hard time filling up these uh, pages. But if this is a size that works for you, this is a fantastic planner. So you also have these uh, calendars, but then in the monthlies you only have the first six or well, seven months. So also for forward planning, I guess. Then the main difference with this one is that you have a weekly calendar here. 
this kind of calendar. I'm looking for blank pages, that's why I'm shifting between books. So you have this weekly view. You can see here where in the month or which week in the month you are. And you can use this however you want. This is a very mani minimalistic design. Minimalistic, minimalist. This is a very bare bones design that allows you to do anything. I've seen so many ideas of people using this in very creative ways. For me, I couldn't really figure out how to use this. So, as you can see, it mostly went unused. Only in this book, I did experiment with some of the wigs, but I, it was more of an experiment than something that was functional for me. And after the weekly views, you have also the turning the page, blank page, and then you start your month just like here. So here you have also the, the, the same time frame that you have here. And it's exactly the, the same size. So this. It's exactly, it's like a taking it taken from here. There you go. You have also month, the day of the month, uh, Wednesday. Here you don't have that. I just noticed that. Hmm. So in, the, in this bigger one, because you have more space, you can see the, uh, which weekday it is, the moon phase, and which day of the year you're in. So the, uh, on August 7th, it was the day 219th in the, of the year. So this can be used also for scheduling appointments, tasks, and you can also ignore this and use this just as a creative space or just for notes. Right now, since I didn't really use this last year because I, I just didn't work for me, I am using this as a plain notebook where I'm writing notes and reviews about books I read, books I like, movies and TV shows. That's why when I was passing the pages you saw, like here's Don Quixote, notes on that book from, that I wrote, The Handmaid's Tale, Euphoria, I have to fill this up. It's still in a process, it's still going. So yes, that's how I am using this because I don't like uh, wasting notebooks. I mean, these are dead trees and they should be honored in a way. And these are the tabs I use and this is actually how I used it. This is a um, Midori MD cover, which fits perfectly with this size. It doesn't fit this size though, uh, be mindful of that. Next, we have, let me show you this one. This one is a gift that I'm taking to my mom this week. So this is the moment to show it to you. This is how they come. They come with this cover. Um, I don't have the cover for this one. It is slightly different, but it is, essentially they come, the English version comes with this explanation in English where it's and you have the same in Japanese in the back. Last year I kept this and used it to do a sketch of one of my favorite book characters, Don Quixote. And I just pasted it because I had the book like this in the cover and I wanted something here, not just the gray page like here. So that's how I used it. They all come every year with a different tiny comic. This year it was this one, which I think it's super cute. In the English version, you have the English translation of the little comic. When you buy the Japanese version, it comes in Japanese, of course, and it shows you all the different planners they have. The one I have for this, I'm going to kind of cut and make into a bookmark or something like that. So let's look inside. You have also this uh, cardboard paper. The difference between this black cardboard and this um, beige cardboard is that this one 
stands anything and you can use it like that. I have this one like the uh, just by itself uh, on my purse and it stands anything, it doesn't stain, you can scratch it, it doesn't, nothing affects it. I wish this cover was like this. Uh, and it's elegant enough that you can just have it like this. So you have the presentation page, you have the 2020 calendar, 2021. Okay, that's different from this one. So here you have the current year and the following year. In the Japanese version, you have current year, previous year, following year. And I think this changed. I remember in here, oh no, it was the same, okay. Current year, following year, okay. So there's that. This is not something that would bother me, but you also have this, which looks slightly different from the Japanese version, as you can see. The English version, I think, is more um, elegant, I'm, I guess, in its design, because it's all great no colors like in this one all the months are gray the only days that have a color is the sun sunday not even so yeah only sunday so you can t tell when that week ends so as you can see here also you have in orange all the sundays so you can mark when a week week ends here you have in red all the sundays and in dark gray Saturdays. And you have a little slightly reddish color. I guess that's for uh, holidays. Um, also in the, Jap the, the grid size is different from the English to the Japanese. I guess it has to do with the way we write. Uh, therefore, since this is a smaller grid, you have more space here for writing things. This barely works for header space. So, so you have the 12 months of the year and then you have January, February and March of 2021. Then you have the monthly view, which also looks different from this. The square, well, they appear to be essentially the same. You have the full, the new moon in here and you have this space to write notes. I use it to put the name of the month in my Japanese version. And you have also the whole year plus the first three months of 2021. Then just like this one, you have the turning the page to a new year where you can use this for whatever you want to use it. And then, unlike this one, when you start a new month, you don't have lines, you only have a blank page. So that's a difference. Uh, here, since this is an English planner, you have quotes in English. Some of the quotes, I must say, are fun. I do, did enjoy the quotes in this one. So essentially, you have the whole year. In your dailies, you, uh, you have your month, the day of the week, the week in the year, which is something that this one doesn't have. And the day in the year. So May 5th is the day 126. You also have the moon phases. You can use this space to write anything. When I started using this as a planner and as a planner as a, and a creative journal thing. I use this for my to-dos, but this wasn't enough space. So that's why I started doing it in this space, but yeah. So here you don't have as many times as in here. You only have noon and then something, I guess, for your meals. But essentially you have 
it, this is more of a blank page to work with. So that's why it made more sense to me to get one of these as my planner. Because I, sometimes I did use this for appointments and I like having these squares, squares for tasks. So this is kind of what uh, um, a week, a day looks with me. I use these for um, tasks more tags, my daily menu, and some personal notes. Sometimes I do use this space for appointments, but I haven't had any important appointments, so that hasn't been the case. So this is the pencil board that Ho and UC sells, one of the pen pencil boards. Every year they have a different color and a special one. So last year, I don't have it with me, the pencil board of the year was blue, Light, like this blue tone and yellow and this was the special cover and I loved it. I like, it makes me happy to see this yes thing. And this year it was kind of like a brown and pink thing but they call it dark gray. And the special pencil board this year was this with the, the Shenga story. Okay, so yeah, this is very minimalist, very bare bones, very elegant. I do like this design. I think it was very inspiring. And as I said before, this was the first Hobonichi I bought. And this is the one that made me fall in love with the brand because I loved being able to use it for anything. It was just the perfect creative space so this one, when I decided to use it for creative journaling, it was kind of my baby steps or my training wheels to accomplish my goal of doing daily journaling. And what happened was that I got to a point where one page wasn't enough for me. I needed more. So in this one, by February or March, I was completely ignoring the dates on top. And just if I felt like continue writing, I will continue on for whatever, for as many pages as I needed. And in the days that I didn't write, I just went back and write and wrote. That's why I had been looking for something similar to this for my creative journaling. And I decided to use this year the Stalogy in the A6 size, uh, which I will do a review later on. The paper is very similar to the Tomoe River paper that Hobonichi uses. Um, it is also very plain, which I like because I can use it for anything. And I've been loving it. I mean, it's the January isn't over and I'm already almost 40 pages in. So I think this will last me for half a year. So, okay, we have the dailies, we have the month in here. Do you have where in the month, in which days in the month we are? I mentioned the moon phases and at the end, I don't, I don't know why they do this, but in the English version, the blank pages have this weird dotted grid, orange dotted grid. I never liked it, I wish it was just like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-five. So it's the same as the Japanese version. Then we have important contacts, international size charts, conversion tables, a ruler, my 100 and local festivities in Japan. This is very cool actually. The Japanese bento. Personal notes and also the serial number. And that's it. This one can only be purchased in this size and this version. They don't have an AVEC version for this nor an A5 size. I think if they did an A5 of this one, it will be very popular because many people do like the bigger size. Mm -hmm.